right. Um, huh? Well, Joe, the chair you're you're in right now is fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, the arms kind of kind of bump it. So I'm yeah, looking, that's true. That's true. Looking, chair looking for arms. looking for another one, but well, just another chair. Yeah, but what's most important is uh, that you have these two chairs with the backs facing in, so that you can just flow from exercise to exercise. Got them. So uh, here's the basic setup for everybody. Take the time to set this up. Mm -hmm. you have two chairs with the backs of the chairs facing in. A decent amount of space, not too far apart, but definitely not really narrow. Right, mm -hmm. so we want some room there. And then a third chair doesn't have to be like my chair at all. Uh, my chair is good for me because I can swivel and change angles. Okay. Okay. Um, but uh, for you, it's ideally would have no arms on it, but it's fine okay. either way. No. In. The basic infrastructure, as always. Front edge of your chair, hands resting comfortably, finding Jung Jung or central upright. Everybody agrees having a good central pillar is, is a, a useful and, and valuable thing to achieve. But then Taoist practice, Tai Chi practice, right away goes into sort of a unique viewpoint, which is relaxation as your means of finding more stability as opposed to grabbing holding bracing it's letting go so the term is chun wan chun wan which means a uh, chinese term meaning heaviness allowing a sinking heaviness to go through the body down through the chair down through the legs down to the earth so in general, there's an attempt by us to sort of pull up away from the ground. And we want to instead explore not doing that at all. Really letting everything go down through the medium of the body to the earth. And that you can do a certain amount of that just right now, just with your mind saying, oh, relax. Oh, okay. And then a certain amount of it is layer upon layer of tissue and muscle and joint that's sort of stuck together. <clears throat> Plus, when you have something like Parkinson's, you have another layer of that, which is like the fragility of the nervous system, sort of be in a state of tension and caution. Uh, and so that's where we have to become masters, like a meditating monk mastering the E or the attention, the mind, not allowing it to get slightly stressed out. So not even a slight amount, right? That's the, the high bar of, a, of an enlightened monk is total, complete equanimity, ease, relaxation, soft, sort of softening, settling into the moment, right? In the face of everything that stresses us out, everything in the world outside of us, everything that's going on inside of us, plenty of reason not to be relaxed. And yet, can we marshal the attention and keep this state of so they say that in the Tao Te Ching, the Taoist book, can you return to the state of the child, the ease and the pliability and the joy and all of that? And it's not saying, can you never leave the state? Because again, we're a child, we're ignorant, and then life happens, We've got all this extra data and information and whatnot, and then the practice of, well, in the face of all of that, turns out the best response is to return to this state of total, simple, joyful, restful ease. 
So how do we do that? One of the ways is breathing in long and smooth, breathing out long and smooth. It helps to marshal, gather the attention. While we're breathing in, breathing out, it's also opening and closing the body, expanding and then releasing the body. So it's helping our structure and our tissue become more supple, pliable, and relaxed. It's helping that chun one that's settling through the body to the earth happen. And as you feel a little more ease through your system, just even a slight hint of, oh, a little more easy, a little more soft, relaxed, and light. That's called ching ling, light, nimble, agile, uh, spontan spontane uh, spontaneous, Right, this sort of vivacious aliveness that suddenly takes the place of heavy, dense, blocked. So just final five breaths with that idea, the mind breathing long and smooth, the upright integrity of your structure, jong jong, but the soft, relaxed, heavy, settling, sinking quality connecting us to the earth, and then feeling what's left is lightness, nimbleness, and ease. You could spend 20, 30 minutes just cultivating this status, this state, returning to your childlike enjoyment of the moment. And then we'll move on to the to the Shen Fa, the body method. So we slide hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back, chest up, chin up, arch the spine. Do that with an inhale. And then with the exhale, slide the hands forward, hollow the chest, round the back, drop the head. And again, inhale. So as we do these practices more and more, they start to become something you are familiar with. So it's not just about getting new exercises all the time. In fact, in a lot of ways, that pursuit of newness can also be shallow. So here we get a chance to take this single exercise and become master craftsmen with it. Be able to use this movement to make more positive impact on your spinal column, your muscles through your torso, your scapula sliding and gliding, your pelvis tipping and tilting so that you're cultivating your qua, your leg, hip space there. And each round being there with it, with the mind so that you're not in a repetitive uh, robotic state, but instead you're an explorer, a very conscious explorer of every little mechanism, every little movement. And then let's settle to the middle and right into your rotations. Sliding left hand forward, right hand and elbow back, and then switch. Don't be in a rush. Again, the goal here is that you guys are familiar with the sequence, the routine, so that you can settle into that routine and become more skillful with each of these Shen Fa, with each of these body methods. One more each way. And a huge piece of why I love Taoist practice is the emphasis on leisure. Leisure. Let's come back to the middle. Hang the arms and then lean. Left wrist floats up. That allows you just that little extra tipping. And if you tip that little extra bit, your left foot should become a little bit empty and sort of float off the ground. And the same thing here. We're softening long the left arm, right wrist floating up, leaning, and then back to center. It's just trying to kind of take the palm tree and just lean it in the wind so that you can see how you don't require bracing and tension to 
maintain balance, that actually that gets in the way, sort of like rust and residue on the gears of a machine, is anywhere that we're engaging, tightening, holding, we're actually limiting function. So we're actually removing this residue so that we can heighten functionality throughout your whole machine. And let's come back to middle. Very important. We always do scapula, shoulder blades, because that's a usual suspect for congestion, right? So again, hopefully now, I think all of you have been coming to class for a while, you know these exercises. So you just flow right into them. As soon as you know what we're doing, you just go in and you slide, protract, elevate, retract, depress. The shoulder blades are, I would say, the most complicated joint in the body. They have the most muscle attachments and articulations and potential movement. So that's why they become a big problem. And they become a bottleneck for the whole body. Now reverse. Back, up, over top, forward, down. Under, back, and up. Over top. Under, back, and up. And then just cleaning off this gunk to residue this rust, these barnacles in the area. Now, I want to add this one. So, right shoulder forward up. As that goes back and down, the left shoulder comes forward up. So this one might be difficult for the brain or difficult uh, for the body to do, but I just want to plant the seeds. So some of you may never have done this one, but basically you can see how they're going sort of off rhythm with each other. And it's a challenge for the brain, but it also creates a different uh, ringing out, sort of ringing out the rag of tension in the, the shoulder girdle, right? And reverse. So we go forward and down, the other one back and up, and then forward and down, back and up, and you flow. Bend your elbows, we go out and up, down, around and in, down, out and up, down, out and in, down and back, down, forward, up, forward, down, back, down, forward, up and down, elbows out, one above, one below, wrap, open, switch and wrap, open, switch and wrap, open, switch and wrap, open, down and loose, loose. Loose and let them just hang. So ideally, this starts to feel spacious, vivacious, fluid, effervescent, rather than the stuck quality that we usually have here, which makes us heavy and clumsy. We want light, empty, adaptable, adjustable, and fluid. Scoot back on your chair a little bit. Go load, push. Load, down, and switch. Load, push. Load, down. <clears throat> Continue. And straight leg, point and flex. And then tilt the foot a little in, out. 
circle. And reverse circles. And switch, point and flex. Tilt slightly in, out. Circles. Reverse. And down. Scoot forward on your chair. Last little thing with the legs. Step a little wider. Lift your toes up. Turn. Knees and toes turn in, and then lift toes and turn out. Open the quad. Close the quad. Open. Close. Open. Close. Neutral. Hip hinge. Sit vertical. Lean back. So from that same space we were just moving, hip hinge. Sit vertical, lean back. Notice how I'm not rounding my back, but I am folding at the hips. Like that. Now, <clears throat> hang your arms loose, slide your feet back. Liquid, fluid, and remember, Chun One is relaxing as your means of finding groundedness and stability, not tightening and holding and forcing things. So we see that right here as we fold, we're gonna stand up, but what's most important is we come forward because that allows the weight out of the chair, down through the legs, down to the earth. And then when we stand up, we can remain loose and nimble and light, and the weight goes down through the ground. And then that light and nimbleness allows us to easily just fold at the hips, Sink down, find the chair, and then we're committed to the chair. So we have to pour out of the chair. The forward is, is the part that I notice people miss out and, and don't remember how to do. But if you just keep awareness of, I'm always going to be grounded. Hip hinge, fold. It just so happens that the body is built that the <clears throat> the feet are the best way to ground, but when we do a handstand, it's the hands that ground. Or when we do a headstand from yoga, it's the head that is the grounding piece. So it's all about allowing that down and through quality to the earth and then getting the rebound from that. There's a sort of buoyancy that comes from it. Uh, a, a good way to think of it, as my teacher said, is gravity, like everything comes in pairs, Gravity does what gravity is going to do, and then there's the opposite, the equal opposite, levity. So that's kind of Chun Wan and Ching Ling, or in yoga they call it rooting and then rebounding. So there's this, this sort of event that we get in the way of when we tighten and try to hold and we try to do something with our own force that when we get out of the way, there's this event that happens, and then we can use that state of uh, gravity, levity to, to operate. So we're standing up, Joe, we're standing up now. So now here, come to this chair and stand right in front of it, and notice you've got more foot in front of the ankle and uh, less behind. So that means we have room to be able to tip forward. So this is that same grounding thing. If you lean slightly forward, you can use only the toes and the ball of the foot, and that's got you grounded. Hands on the chair for safety when you rock back, and then put all the weight just in the heels, and notice how you can find groundedness there. And then go forward into the toes. So we want to have adaptable, adaptable balance rather than some stuck idea of balance, right? We're tipping and tipping, and we're finding our loose quality and yet keeping stable. 
Now, hands on the chair, rock into your toes and lift your heels way, way up. Then lower the heels down, rock back to the heels and pull the toes way, way up. And then down and rock to the toes and push down, lift the heels way, way up. Remember to keep your hand on the chair, especially on the rocking into the heels and lifting the toes, because that one is the, the more dangerous one. All right, this helps pump and clear stagnation down in the feet, ankles, calf, and shin area, which tends to get plugged up, right? And now come back uh, to neutral. Now uh, plant your palms on that chair, walk back, and then we send the butt back and stretch the legs, stretch the shoulders, stretch the back. And then the chest lifts up. Take the pressure out of the pose for a moment, and we'll do it one more time. Hips back. And then walk forward. All the way, all the way, all the way till you are vertical. Turn and face forward. Take a step a little bit back from the chair so the chair is in front of you and to the right. Now that's perfectly placed for the rest of uh, the exercise. First and most important exercise. Both feet are completely contacting the ground, but now change your weight over to just one leg, your left leg, and have a little bit of this, you can see in my leg, a little bendability. And then change the weight over to the right leg and have a little bit of that bendability. Now, I'm ideally changing 100% and zero, full and empty, and then changing full and empty, but I'm not pulling the foot off the ground at all. Everything's staying relaxed. Arms are loose, shoulders loose, just like we took all that time to empty out. Now stay in your left leg, right foot empty. Use that empty Ching Ling levity quality to lift the heels, get to the tippy toe and then put the heel back down and then change your weight. Let the weight go down through the right leg and we go heel lifting, get to the tippy toe and down, change. So really important that people often forget is the lift of course has an empty quality but we wanna keep that quality when you put the foot down. So don't let your body weight fall into the foot, separate those events change the weight. So the foot lifts and lowers with no weight. Then we change. Lift, lower, change. Now place your hand on the chair for safety, lightly. Tippy toe and disconnect from the ground. Place the whole foot down, no weight, change. The weight goes down, that's the chun one, that's the gravity. And then this is the levity. So we use that levity of emptiness to make us functional and mobile. And then change. So priority, there's a sequence. You got to get the down. That produces the up. If you don't get the down, any attempt to go up is, is going to fail. It's going to be dangerous. It's going to be clumsy. So get that relaxed down through the earth and feel how this foot becomes free. And then change, prioritize down. If you get the down right, lift. Now make sure this isn't happening. Don't do anything like this. Don't lean. So Moshe, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing that you were leaning in the previous one. Use your chair to keep this vertical, right? Because if I lean like this I'm and I lean on my chair, I'm training bad mechanics. So relax, but don't be sloppy. See how I have a vertical axis. It doesn't mean I'm holding myself stiff. It just means I'm not leaning around, right? So now hand on the chair. Let's go all the way up, all the way down. Change. So again, let all that weight go down and through. The levity of this leg all the way up, down while empty, change. 
The weight going down allows the up, the down, the weight going down, up, down. Some of you at some point might play with no hand on this, but you got to be careful because I mean, you can see I can make it look chill and easy and relaxed, and it can be that. But until it is, there's all kinds of barnacles and clumsiness in our body. So that's what the chair allows you to be safe and courageous to practice all this work. Now, put all the way to your left leg, right foot in front, heel touching the ground. So now it's the same down priority, but now we're going down while moving forward. So now I'm moving forward and I'm moving backwards. And so Carrie, I see you there. Make sure you have, have some chairs there for your safety, you know, uh, get, get, the, get the setup. So again, we've got this right foot forward. This is empty. Now I'm going to move forward, but really I'm just going down. And watch how that brings you forward and brings you backwards to be going down and down. 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 Now, hand on the chair so we can go lift, lower, down. Once we're down, then we can go flamingo. Touch the toe. Down. Weight going down, staying down, gives me the, the ability to do that in a relaxed way. Weight going down makes this leg empty. Down. So premature, meaning too early, Stepping or lifting is what gets people in trouble. They go only 60% and then they use some force to try to pull it up and then it's all clumsy. So slow down enough to go, okay, I've achieved 100, zero, and then you'll notice all kind of function becomes available. And then slow down and as soon as I've really committed here, then all of a sudden this has function. Change. And then you can just get better at the change. The change can eventually be instantaneous, like pluck, dropping, letting it get to the earth. But you have to, again, you have to train that. You have to loosen what's in the way of that. Now let's go level three here. We go up, heel touch softly, chain. This leg, forward and up, toe reach back, chain. As the weight goes down and stays down, that gives this function to the leg. And then as the weight goes down and stays down, this leg has function. Last one. And switching sides. So now you go closer to this chair over here. Put all the weight in your right leg, left foot out in front. Level one, just casual. Shift, shift, <clears throat> shift. And this is a good one to practice no hands on the chair because we're not leaving the ground, right? We're not trying any lifts of the leg. So we're able to just really practice getting comfortable letting softness be our mode of transportation and our mode of stability. Rather than tightening, holding, gripping, it's releasing, softening. Now, hand on chair for level two. Lift and lower, and then shift. And then this back leg empty, flamingo. Just bend the knee, put the toe down, shift. As the weight goes down, Lift, lower. As the weight goes down, a little bend. The weight goes down, lift, lower. The weight goes down, bend, down, lift. Now let's go lift, hand on chair, down, 
shift into that front leg. And then this one comes forward and up, like you're about to step up a huge curb and then reach the toe back and then shift back. And then we go up, down, shift, weight going down, up, back, shift. And so, Joe, I, I, it looks like you think that when I do something with my hands, you're supposed to do that with your hands. That's not the case. You just keep your arms relaxed, right? If I'm doing something with my hands pointing, it's just instructional. It's not telling you to do that, right? Or in that case, I had an itch on my wrist, and then I saw you doing something. So just don't, don't think you need to do what my hands are doing. Focus on the lower half here. Forward and back. The down allows this and this to happen safely with no disturbance. And then the down allows this and this with no disturbance to the equilibrium. And back. Switch sides again. So a little side, shift, step. Now you should be close to this chair. Now we go weight in the left leg, right foot in front. Shift. Once it's 100% in your right leg, the left foot should be empty. Step it while it's empty. Just a little step. And then shift. And I'll turn slightly sideways so you guys can see. Down. I step and this remains empty. Down. So the whole time I'm down. Down, step while empty, down, down, and your chair's there for safety when you need it. You want the chair to give you confidence to practice being relaxed. Hand on chair, lift, lower, shift. The down gives you the freedom to pick up that back foot, step over something, put the foot down, shift. And then your back leg, a little bend to the knee, toe down, and then shift. Now this leg, up, tuck, reach, shift. The weight going down gives that little freedom of lift, lower, Shift. Step over something. Shift. Little bend. Toe. Shift. Up. Tuck. Reach and shift. Lift. Now we're going to go next level. Lift. Heel down. Shift. So it shouldn't matter, or eventually it won't matter what this leg does. It can do this full range of movement, and it won't disturb your equilibrium. Again, as you open up the relationships in the body. Forward and up. Toe back. Shift. The down gives this freedom. Hand on chair for this one. If you have any amount of sort of clumsy feeling in the body, please use the chair. I have yet to have anybody fall, and I want to keep it that way. And switching sides. Side step, shift the weight, bring the foot in, chair is here, level one, put the foot in front, just the most casual walk, shift, step, shift, shift back, step, shift back. So we're separating, shifting without stepping, Stepping without shifting, so there's no weight, and then I decide that it's time to put the weight in that leg. 
separating empty and full. That's a saying in the principles of Tai Chi. Separate so that this is now empty. Now I make what was empty full and what was full empty. That empty quality gives it levity. And then <clears throat> change. Change. Step. Change. Now level two, hand on chair. So this just adds challenge. It says, okay, is it really empty? Shift. Is it really empty enough to pick up and slowly step over a little object? And then shift. And is it really full and empty so that you can do a little flamingo lift? Down. Shift. Up. Tuck. Reach. The structure and mechanics of the body are such that we should, could be able to sustainably support all the way to the body on just one leg. But if we don't train that, then we got problems. And a lot of people can walk around their lives, right, get around the world, but yet can't stand on one leg. And so you can get away with that for a while but it's always a threat to you. Whereas when you train this, suddenly you, you, you feel different. You have a different function that becomes available to you. And finally, level three, lift, lower, shift. Now we exaggerate this knee, up, foot, all of this just to try to get a freedom of movement through the limbs. Change. Knee, foot back, shift. Up, tuck, reach. All of that, and I haven't left this leg, gotten all the way to here, and then now. Same thing here. I'm down through this leg, going all the way up, all the way down, still through this leg. Now I change. Now I'm down through this leg for this whole knee. Down through this leg. Whole movement. Whole movement. Shift. And back. Now. Move to the left side of your, of your space. And then turn and face down range. So you've got a big runway and you've got your chairs on your left. Level one, put the weight through your right leg, left foot out. Change. Step without shifting. Shift without stepping. Smaller steps in the beginning are far more valuable because if you launch yourself forward clumsily, you're not training the internal mechanics of it. So a comfortable step, change the weight. Comfortable step, change the weight. A comfortable step, keeping the foot empty when you step it, and then change the weight. Comfortable step, Change the weight. Now, going backwards should be the same thing, comfortable. So change the weight into one leg only. The empty foot can go back because it's got levity. It can float. Now it's touching the ground, and you change the weight. Now that leg is the full leg. Other leg has that levity, and you just go change the weight. Try to make it very casual, this first one especially. Just float the foot back. You can even sort of glide it along the ground, right? But if it's empty, it can float. Change the weight. Step. Change the weight. Let's do that again. Those of you that have been doing it a while, you could speed it up if you want. But remember, speeding up isn't an effort. It's actually just a, a, a more loose quality. You just kind of casually cruise across, and you casually cruise across. And if you're relaxed enough, then you realize it's just down, down. If you don't get the down right, you have no business taking a step. 
You haven't, you haven't earned it, let's say. So you earn the right to be able to take a step or go up a stair by relaxing and connecting to the ground. That liberates the limb. And you do it again. And you do it again. Do it again. So see if you can do that. We'll just do a couple more rounds like that. See if you can take whatever your current control speed is and add 0. 0.0001 to it. So that whatever you're doing, you just add this feeling of flow. So that's the other thing that Tai Chi offers. We have to slow down first to reorganize and realign things, the brain, the nerves, the body, the mechanics. But then what's, fun, uh, what's really wonderful about it is flow. It starts to just feel like liquid, just fluid. You're just going, okay, just relax. Just kind of cruise across. Make it easy. Yeah. Do it one more time. Just get that casual, sort of jazzy feeling of just sauntering, moseying. And so it's relaxed, but it's not sloppy. That's the key. It's got to be precise and loose. Precise and totally leisurely. Usually those things are uh, separated from each other. All right, now, once you get back to your starting position, turn and face forward again at the far left of the uh, runway and go right foot out, right foot in. So what's important with this one is the qua. So the groin crease right in here, when you bring that right foot in so the feet are touching, feel how that space is closed in both legs. You've got left qua and right qua closed. Now, if you do this right, when you step sideways out, you should feel a little opening in this space. So the right qua opens, closes, opens, closes. That's as opposed to both staying closed. And then when I step, you see how that pulls my body with it. So this is clumsiness, clumsy because my body's stuck together. And then when I move, it's going ka-chunk, ka-chunk. So the grace that Tai Chi offers has to do with the space, right? You see this movement of my leg. If I can do this, then I can go fa, fa. I can go fast, but not because I'm rushing. It's because I'm relaxing. Like a little puppet. Like you get the puppet strings going. Now bring that right foot out or step it out. Right claw is open, left claw is closed. Now close right claw, open left claw. Keep the foot down. Don't let the heel come up. That keeps the claw closed. Keep the heel down, but get this opening right in that space. And then now close the left, open the right. And then close the right, open the left. So this interior space is how we are operating the machine. The legs are relaxed, like sort of uh, spring-loaded, and then I'm finding interior real estate, which is allowing me to put 100, zero, and then back to 100, zero. Now let's go 100, zero, close left claw, open left claw, close, Open. No clumsiness if you can help it. Try not to be glued together doing this, but instead feel that separation and return. Separation, return. Separation. Now, bring that left foot in, feet touching if you can, so you're very narrowly sort of uh, together, kind of an unstable position, right? And then work on changing the weight down through your left leg with both qua closed. Change the weight down through the right leg. Change the weight down through the left leg. So you can see this foot is empty. My feet are together. And then I do a little maneuver in this space. And now this leg is empty. Right? And then I'm doing that same maneuver. So this is where you gotta have that bendability, that open quality, right? Change, change, 
Now, put all the weight down through your left leg. Step that empty right foot out. Change. Now, as the left foot is empty, it can float in. Change. Imagine a cappuccino cup on your head filled to the brim. You got to keep it balanced. You got to not spill it as you're moving. But we're not tightening to do that. We're relaxing. Bring that left foot in. Change. So the weight goes down. It stays down as I step this foot out. And then it goes down. As this is empty, this can float in. Down. Step. Down. Step. Let's go the other way. Step. Down. Step. Down. So you got to earn the right to be able to take a safe Tai Chi step. How do you earn that right? You have to relax. You have to let the mechanism of the leg function, not like locking up a stilt, but by being like a soft, pliable spring. Change. I got to earn the right to step this foot by getting completely down through this one. And then it can float. And I gotta do it again. Change, step, change, step, change, step, change, step. Let's do it again. So some of you, as you get a little better at this, you might just, again, it's not speeding up. You can see what I'm doing. I'm moving a little faster, but do I look like I'm rushing? No, in fact, I'm relaxed even more. And just going la di da, la di da. Scooting, scooting on across the room, just using softness and groundedness and lightness. And then we go back this way, loose, chain, loose. The moment you start feeling clumsy, notice that and go, oh, yeah, I'm speeding up, I'm using tension to do this instead of relaxing more and then relaxing even more. And there. Now, come to stand in the middle of your chairs. So you're right in the middle, you got that safety around you. Put all your weight in your left leg. Right leg is empty. Now, Notice you can turn your leg out and you can turn the hips a little bit so that you sort of arrange and you can see what's going on over to your right. And then turn back to neutral. The leg turns to neutral. You're arranged looking forward. Now, turning the right leg in so the heel goes out, toes come in, and the hips can turn a little bit that way. So now, you're able to sort of arrange and see what's going on over here. And then back to neutral. So what I'm pointing out is it's not just the leg bone that's turning and turning. It is, but it's also the pelvis. And if it's the pelvis, it's the whole torso turning on this left leg that's being the stable item. So this is empty. And the whole body turns a little bit, turns and then turns, right? So now let's skip the neutral and turn open. And then skip neutral and turn close, pigeon toe. Turn open, turn close. Back to neutral, let's switch, go to the other side. So put all the weight down through your right leg, turn the left leg and body open to this side neutral, and then turn in, neutral and turn out, neutral and turn in, and then let's skip neutral, turn, 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 turn. turn. Back to neutral. Change the weight to your left leg. We go turning out. Now, 
This foot is turned out. It's empty. The primary direction is still down. So change the weight down through your right leg and then bring your whole body around to square one quarter turn to the right. Change the weight to your left leg again, right foot empty, turn the leg, foot, and body out to the right again. And then the weight goes into your right leg, down through the right leg. So now your left foot being empty should be able to float right into position. Your whole body is turned a quarter turn to the right. Change your weight to your left leg again. Turn the right leg out and the body turns a little bit as well. And then change the weight into your right leg and bring the left foot around. So you're another quarter turn. And then on this next one, you could, should be back to the starting position. Turn your right foot out. Change the weight. And we're back to where we start. Do it again. Weight down through the left leg. That frees the right foot, leg, and body to turn out. And then change the weight. Change, turning out, change. And this is again achieved by focusing only on relaxation and down, down through the body, down through the legs, to the earth, down. Try not to get caught in your hips or caught in your locked knees. So where you feel pain usually, or where you feel sort of awkwardness, it's usually because you're clenching or you're falling out of position, kind of stuck in something. So we have to arrange everything so there's this springy throughness, and then operate our hydraulic machine. Now we're going to go to the left, so put the weight down through your left leg, turn your left foot out, leg out, body turns a little, and then change and turn. And then weight down through the right leg again, left foot now free, body free to turn, and then change. So the important pre-game movement is this weight down through and that freedom of movement to turn, and that sets us up for a very successful change of weight. And again, it's this down through the right leg that then frees us up to have a nice, successful, graceful turn of the body and change of perspective where we're looking. And then bring it around. Weight down through the right leg, free the left foot, turn the body, change, step. Weight down through, turn. And again, those of you that have been doing it a while, you'll know you'll notice that you can eventually sort of do that simultaneously, as in right leg down and turn. Change weight and bring together. So that's where speed becomes available to us. It's actually efficiency. It's not rushing. It's weight goes down and I turn and then I'm around. But I didn't rush. I just was precise with it. Now, Right leg, instead of turning out, turn it in. Change the weight to the right leg. Bring your left foot to match it. Put the weight down through your left leg again. Turn. So it's this pigeon toe. And then change the weight and bring the left foot to match. So there's a sort of backwards quality to this one where we're pigeon toeing. This leg is empty and then I'm going back into it and bringing this foot to match and then changing and doing that again, turning. There's a sort of backwards quality and then change. We do it again. Pigeon toe, change, bring the foot, change. Pigeon toe, change, <clears throat> match, change. Pigeon toe, change, back. Once you get around to the facing forward position, just do it the other way. So the left leg, instead of it turning out, it turns 
in. And I'm sort of looking over here. And then I change my weight into the left leg, bring the right foot. Okay? And then the weight into the right leg. I'm turning. Turning. Like that. And then change. around twice. So you're using your footwork to scan the space around you to keep you very grounded and stable and yet also mobile and functional. And also this importance of changing orientation, where we are oriented in the room before we try to strike out and move. And then last thing here, we'll go right foot turn out like we did before, change the weight into that right leg and pigeon toe with the left foot. So now in two foot movements, I've gotten 180 degrees around. And then right leg turn out, the weight's gotta go down through the right leg. If the left foot is free, then we can go and go and go and go and go and turn the left foot in and then change the weight. So then in two more foot movements, we're facing back to where we started. Try that again. Right leg turns out. Weight goes down through the right leg. It stays down through the right leg. So the left foot is empty, 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 still empty as I pigeon toe. And then change. And then turn the right leg out 90, change the weight, pigeon toe, change the weight. Now we're going to go the other way, left foot turns out 90, change, pigeon toe, change, turn the left leg out 90, Shift into it, the body can turn, the foot can turn, change. So we're using the fact that, again, our hips are ball and socket joints. So the ball in the socket can turn and rotate. So if we do it right, we have this ability to open and close and spiral and turn, right? Get all the way around facing forward. Because if, our, if we didn't have rotating possible hips, we'd have to do this to turn, right? We'd have to like penguin walk when we turn. But a lot of times that's what I see people doing. Uh, not in this class so much, but when I'm working with people privately, even if they know how to do this right, they whenever fear kicks in, then when they get, they have to turn, especially with Parkinson's, this, and maybe this has happened to you, where all of a sudden you're going, right? Doing a million little foot paddles to try to turn around in a way that, that is exhausting and it's just not utilizing the brain and body, right? Whereas when you see this, oh, I got to turn around and go that way. Well, I don't just launch myself that way because that's how you fall. So what do you do? You Put the weight here, you turn this leg out, you rotate and you turn, and then you can walk in that new direction. So the last exercise I want to do trains that idea. So we've got our little frame here. So come stand to the left side and the slightly front of the chair area. And we're going to turn the right leg out 90 degrees, just like we worked on. Now, shift into the right leg and turn the body. The left foot should be empty. Now, take a step forward in your new direction with your left foot, and then shift into your left foot. So now your right foot should be empty, so you're going to step around turning the toes out, right? So you're kind of stepping forward and turning it out and shifting into it. Turn the body, bring the body along for it. And so now you should be facing away from the camera and take a step 
in that new direction with the left foot and shift into your left foot. So we're just working on reorienting and going. So here I go, I'm turning my right foot out. I haven't put any weight into it, I'm not in danger, but I'm setting it up. And then shift, turn the body, and then with that left foot empty, you take a step in your new direction and shift. So we do it again, right foot is empty, comes a little bit forward and turns. So we've got to turn around a corner. We've got to change orientation. The foot is on the ground. Shift. The body's coming along safely. Turn. Take a step in your new direction. Left foot. Right foot turns out. Shift. Take a step in your new direction. Right foot turns out. Shift into the right leg. Take a step with the left foot. Shift into the left foot. Turn the right foot out, shift into the right foot, take a step with the empty left foot, shift into the left foot. Right foot turns out, shift into it, take a step. And side steps to this corner. Turn the left foot out 90 degrees, shift into the left foot, right foot is empty, you can take a step with it and shift into it. Left foot empty, turn it out, shift into it, take a step with the right foot, shift. You should be traveling now, turn the left foot out, across the room, from chair to chair. If you're doing this right, you're walking, I'm near this chair, I'm turning, shifting, and taking a step, so I'm near this chair, now I'm, I'm going to get all the way over there by turning the foot out. Shifting and then taking a step with the right foot and shifting. Now I'm near this chair. Left foot turns out. Shift and step. Turn the left foot out and shift and step. Left foot turns out. Shift. Step. Primary direction is still down. So I'm down. That's what gives you the stability you're looking for. When we start adding these variables of turning and advancing and so on and so forth, it's this down. And how do I get down? By relaxing. So that's a, it's a tall order when we're doing something dangerous or uh, threatening to relax in the face of it. But that's Tai Chi. That's Tai Chi, how to walk, move but also how to be in martial arts, where if, if you're training Tai Chi, you train doing what's called push hands, where two people kind of connect and you try to find each other's resistance points and you learn how to soften and yield in the face of these threats. And so that's exactly what we're doing here. When you're walking around, something scary, a curb, the stairs, whatever, and you go, relax. And then that makes you more functional, more adaptable. So thank you so much, everybody. Great job. Uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to unmute and uh, ask. It's good to see you, Carrie.